oh God, by your wonderful word, by your wonderful anointing, by your wonderful working, do these things we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Do these things we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Suturina nangando rosti. Suturiningli biandala de megisi. Zizizi de rijana. Ibrahma mamangal brada beki ishi brana. Zizizi tundi de visi vivitis. Mamanda. Shivandala de megisi.
everlasting Lord, creator of the heaven and earth. Everlasting God, everlasting Lord, creator of the heaven and earth. How great thou art. How great.
chest and soul. Let the rivers flow. Let the rivers flow. Springs flowing 
from the presence of our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody shout, thank you, Lord Jesus. You redeemed me. Thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for washing me. Come on, people. You can do better than that. Come on, man. Where's your strength? Sura bao, supatai, kamama sabao. Sivre bae, redeemed by the blood. Oh, Jesus Christ, the Lamb. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Reading Bible of Jesus Christ the Lamb. Let me hear you shout. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed by the blood. Oh, Jesus Christ, the Lamb, let me hear you cry it out. Listen, your shout expresses how strength, how much strength's on the inside of you, how much might from the Lord you have. I certainly hope there's a whole lot more than what I'm hearing. Oh, redeem. Let me hear you shout it out. Redeem, redeem. Cry to the Lamb, redeem, redeem. Just imagine that the Spirit of the Lord saying, who is redeemed? I'm certain that you're not going to be wanting this uh, representation like, oh, I am. I mean, there's going to be something. On the inside, exploding unto God when the Spirit of the Son's on the inside. When a river's pouring out from your emotion. Come on, people! Susa Bayalo! Surra Basibra Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless the Lord. Today I got good news for you. Anybody who's sick or diseased in your body is keeping you from being able to shout and praise God any louder than that. We're going to pray for you. We're gonna see you get healed of whatever it is that infirms you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's a breakout in the shout. You start shouting, Hallelujah. Unto the Lord, I'm telling you. I promise you, you will draw water from the well. Must say Pekeoma. Somebody said, well, I don't think there's a necess a, a, it's ne necessary to shout. Well, you're going to have to argue with God. You're going to have to counsel the Almighty because He's declared it. This is the way it works. And besides that, how's that been working for you? <laughs> ah, I'm certain not very well. Hallelujah. Not on the scale that Papa's purposed. Because he's purposed us to take nations to, he's purposed us as great signs and wonders and miracles and above everything else to be able in every way to overcome the dominions of the powers of darkness that would try to impose himself upon us. Listen, I understand what's going on in Southern California. There's a gag order from hell. There's oppressing powers of darkness that shuts people's mouths, shuts them down, makes them bow to an idol that, that Satan has erected. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you'll allow the Spirit of the Lord to strengthen you where you'll bow no more. You'll no longer be silenced. Hallelujah. Where there won't be any Philistines around. Man, I done killed them all. It, there's no Philistines around to stop up my wells. Hallelujah. 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 Uh -huh. 
You stay in the fire of his presence, I guarantee you every demon spirit that would try to shut down praise in your life, they would try to shut down the expressions of the Holy Ghost, which brings forth the outworking of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you're not going to get any on your own. I want you to understand you don't get any on your own. It is a gift that comes from God. It is a supply to us by the Holy Ghost. You've got to learn how to yield to Him, walk with Him, obeying Him. God's not going to do it your way. I don't care how high-minded you are and think He should. He's not going to, and I praise Him that that's the way it is because I'd hate to follow you. Come on now. I'm, I'd hate to follow me. Oh, I just, I want to follow him. <laughs> He's got it going on. And it's all that I desire. You know, I'm just always overwhelmed how people are so impressed with half, tr half truths. I heard someone today, supposedly, everybody wants to go listen to him. He says, because Jesus washed away our sins we have eternal life and that's all there is to it no that's not all there is to it because he washed away our sins we've been made a new creation so that we can walk in the spirit and obey god and live an entirely different way opposed and opposite to the world so that now therefore bringing forth the fruits of eternal life hallelujah the spirit of the living god may shine bright in a dark and crooked and perverse world hallelujah People just want to stand around and say, oh, Jesus did it all. There's nothing left for you to do. Yes, there is. <laughs> you must obey. Hallelujah. You must be willing to walk in an entirely different way and live an entirely different life. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Every day taught to be like the devil. Praise God for the new birth so that you could be born in righteousness and now shaped in holiness and every day be taught by God, the Holy Ghost, how to live just like Jesus. <laughs> That's good news to me. Now, if you wanted to stay in fear and worry and hate and lust and envy and iniquity, I know it's not good news. But if you wanted to live over in a place of love and peace and glory divine, hallelujah, walking in joy unspeakable, hallelujah, and peace all the time, it's good news. Come on, baby, I'm glad you're in the meeting. People's clap, you know. Yes, praise God. I'm really happy, but very, 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 very deep down inside. I'm very, very happy. I'm full of joy. I love God so much. I, I was I was trying to deal with a person the other night, trying to tell me how much they loved God and how close they were to the Lord while they came up to be healed of their sickness and iniquity, looking like they'd been jerked through a demonic realm backwards. And I'm like, you know what? You may really believe that, but the only legitimate response to God's love is your obedience. That's what he says. He said, if you love me, you obey me. And God, the Holy Ghost, is here to help you do all that. You just got to quit being so stinking hard-headed and self-centered and self-absorbed. You know why people don't praise God? Their self is bigger than God. You know why people don't get excited and shout about the things of the Lord all the time? Because their realm of thinking and insight and perception is bigger than the word insight that the, and wisdom that the word of the Lord delivers. And what we're here to do is to help you turn all of that around. You know, if I were just here to just lay, lay it out for you and tell you where all you're just messing up. Because you came in here today to be evaluated. You, became, you came in here today to be, to be perfected. This, that's why you came here. That's what the church is all about. God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to perfect you. Huh? To look at you. Listen, I, I take care of cows. I know what exactly to do when a cow's not looking right. When a sheep's not looking right, I know exactly what to do. You go to work. And I say, oh, well, you know, just leave them, watch them for a while. Yeah, I'll leave them, watch them for a while. They're going to be dead. Huh? We came in. God's come to help you. He's come to take you from where you've been living over into a whole nother realm of glory. If you could just fix this little mic, it'd be awesome. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Of course, it does help when I turn it on, doesn't it? You still got to fix it, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, people. Get radical, for, radical for, for God. Go big or go home. Go all the way with God or go, go home. Go to Jesus. Come on now. Go. You know, I had a person in front of me the other day with cancer say, want me to pray for him. I said, so what are you going to do with your healing? 
He just sat there and looked at me, just staring at me. What are you going to do with your healing? And you know, the, the, the big question is, you wouldn't even be here unless you were diseased. It's, the, it's disease that got you on the front row in the first place. You think about it, people. Come on now. Come on, people. Stand there and look at me like that. Say, where, where's somebody getting radical? Stand up and say, that's right. Pastor's telling us like it is. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm, I'm going I'm to go big for God. I'm going to quit did a dallying around with us. Though. No, Father is not going to move in people's lives that are not going to be radical. Because God didn't call for us to be anything else. He's radical and he told us to imitate him. People want to play it safe, do it their own way. I'm not interested in doing anything that's not written in the Word. Go ahead, do whatever it is you want to do that's not written in the Word. I'm going to be busy doing, we're doing what's in the Word and, go, and, and act like God, imitate God, and enjoy the things of heaven. Come on now. Come on, come on, people. You know, I was, uh, I don't remember where I was. I think it was in Africa. You can be seated. I think it was in Africa, but the Lord told me, He said, you know, I'm not interested in all the preaching and the singing think about it God says I'm not interested in all the preaching and the singing well you know you think my goodness if we're not preaching and singing what are we going to be doing sitting around looking at each other <laughs> no he's interested only in us flowing in the Holy Ghost that brings forth singing and preaching we just want to do it our own way and then we're happy to do it because we felt a little bit of anointing shame on you shame on us I'm not interested in a little bit of anointing I'm interested in ever-increasing manifestation, the power and the glory of God. Why is it that you're going to be lukewarm? Be willing to just have, live with whatever it is that you got. Somebody said, I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. I've got signs and wonders and miracles going on in my life. Big deal. Where's these works and greater works? Where's the fullness of God being made manifest in your life? People said, and, and then there's a lot of people who don't even have that. They say, well, I showed up to church every Sunday morning for the past five years. And I haven't cussed anyone out <laughs> for six months. And that's their high water mark. I mean, goodness gracious. And somehow they're happy with themselves in that. Give me a pray. God's called us to live in heaven. I mean, when you live in heaven, why would you ever want to go back to hell? Listen to me. Listen to me. God wants to show you a realm of abundant life that makes your everyday existence without him look like nothing but hell. Listen to me. If you've got turmoil, strife, envy, all that stuff that belongs to the realm of the demonic going on in your life, you're living in hell, man. And we're here to give you some good news. Today you can live in heaven. Amen. From here on out, we'll jerk you right over into heaven. You want to sit around being sad, sorrowful, doubt, unbelieving, worried, concerned? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Living in worry and concern. You guys, is that, you enjoying that air? It is? I have to stay away from it. It gets on the, it gets on the recording and it's really an interesting sound. It's, a sound, sound. it's like a suddenly, you know, sound of a rushing mighty wind. But it doesn't just come with a blessing. It's just like all of a sudden it becomes obnoxious with this continual roar. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Isn't, isn't Jesus wonderful? Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, I said, praise God. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Yeah, he is. And I tell you right now, what happens is you begin to live in this all the time. And there becomes an explosive expression on the inside of you. Same place miracles comes from. Your praise is a reflection of the faith that is on the inside of you, the flow of faith, the flow of the Holy Ghost, and we want to get it, we want to improve it. And it ain't going to improve if all you do is practice for 30 minutes once a week. Huh? And that's under duress from the pastor screaming at you with blood vessels popping out of his neck, you know. It's going to have to come as a love relationship reaction where you're caught away every day. Where you wake up in the morning, start dancing in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I know you are just all consumed with whether or not you're going to get a raise. But I'm interested <laughs> in whether you're going to get raised from the dead. Amen. You know, I'm interested in whether you're going to be able to hear your spiritual ability to hear God speak, to hear God sing, to hear God play a musical instrument that will ultimately result in your body being raised up from the dead. I'm interested more than anything else in what you're going to be doing a half a second after you breathe out your last breath. I'm interested in making sure that everything is exactly like God said it's supposed to be in your life. I'm not going to play pretend. I'm not here to play pretend. I'm not here to be satisfied. 
You know, with 50% God and 50% of a good human effort. I'm not here to be satisfied with a, com with a complete start over with God. You born again, sweet baby, you know, in Christ <laughs> Jesus laying in a manger. I'm here with seeing you for the purpose of seeing you grow and mature and become fully equipped to live out the life of Jesus. If they, listen, if you want to understand the gospel, it's simply to live the life of Jesus and to function and work in his ministry. Anything less is another gospel. It's not what Jesus preached. God did not God did not send at a great cost to himself his only begotten son, the eternal word, who was then made in the form of a servant to come and die at Calvary's cross so you could live a normal, everyday Christian life that's barely distinguishable between you and the world except for that you show up to Sunday morning service. Now, I can understand why you might be silent there. But when I talk about praising Christ Jesus, thanking Him for His precious blood that washed us from our sin, and thanking Him for the Holy Ghost that He's poured out upon us because He won gifts for us. Did you know that? You know what the gift he won for us was? The Holy Ghost, who's so sacred, is so wonderful. Uh, 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 come on, people. Come on. Come on. My, you have to under, listen, you have to understand my issue. My issue is I stay in the, the realms of the Spirit of God all the time. I'm just not used to having to watch people around me supposedly confess that they're full of the Holy Ghost going on and on. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want to see some excitement in you, okay? But, you know, and, and if you don't have any excitement, if you don't have any excitement because your body is all wrecked with pain, and you, then we want to see you get healed. If you don't have any excitement in Jesus because you backslidden, we want to see you get revived. If you don't have any excitement for Jesus because you lukewarm, we want you to re respond to Christ Jesus who's banging on the door of your heart. He's amazing. You know, he could just easily walk away. You know, that's an amazing verse of scripture in Revelation chapter 3. You know, he describes how detestable lukewarmness is to him, the three states of men. But then he doesn't leave it there. He said, but look, even you lukewarmers, man, he's talking directly to lukewarmers. He said, you lukewarmers, I'm banging on the door of your heart. He's an amazing God. You know, the Lord lays out a case by the prophet Hosea of how wicked Israel had become. And they'd become so wicked that, you know, even though he really does encapsulate it in Hosea chapter 6, verses 11 through 14, it really goes beyond that description. And that description is bad. That description is really the description of the mother of harlots, you know, the worst evil that could possibly be against God. And if you look at it, understand it from secular history that is built around that and also archaeological, biblical, biblical archaeological history is far worse than that description. But the Lord says... In, in Hosea chapter 3, verse 1, he says to this, he says this to his prophet Hosea. You know, I'm glad I'm not his prophet Hosea, right? He says, pro, he says Hosea, go marry a vile prostitute. Not just your every ordinary prostitute, but a vile prostitute. You know, a two-penny prostitute kind of thing. A vile prostitute, one that doesn't, is not very expensive. Go marry her and, 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 and love her so that Israel may be able to see how much I love her, even though she's played the harlot on me. He's an amazing God, isn't he? Is that, you, can you, have you ever heard of someone loves like this? I heard somebody say, well, my wife cheated on me, or my husband cheated on me, and I tell you, I just can't get over that. And they growl, and they spill out all of their resentment and unforgiveness. That was a very deep love, was it? It really wasn't very deep love. Praise God for deep love, huh? Praise God for a commitment that it just goes on forgiving and goes on showing mercy. I'm God, glad, so glad that God is not like 95% of the Christians on the planet. If they are the representation of God, it would be a terrible disaster. Of the hate, the strife, the envy, the complaining, the murmuring, the bickering, the stubbornness, the self-centeredness. No way. And it's about time God has the right representative on the earth. Hallelujah. It's about time people give themselves completely over the Holy Ghost because unless you do, all you're going to do is stink with human corruption. But I'm going to tell you right now, you gave yourself over the Holy Ghost with a sweet smell of heaven be all over you. Hallelujah. Just a couple, I would be shouting if I, I, I feel like being, today I feel like being the preacher, preach, run over to the chair, turn around and go, woo! Yeah! And then come back up here and preach and come back sit on the chair. And then, man, I'm telling you right now, I'm getting so excited right at this very moment. I feel like just basically giving myself an extra offering and, and writing a letter of encouragement saying, man, this is so blessed that there's somebody on the planet who's calling it like it is. 
You know, I, I'm so, I was so depressed watching the Republican show. A full-on fictional drama of hollow words lost in space and all God's people getting excited about it. While at the same time they sit in church mute, unable to declare the goodness of God and how wonderful He is. It's about time somebody wakes up and pulls the cloak of deception off. Huh? Give me a break. Who wants to maintain a society and a system that, that kills 50 million kids? Huh? And, the, and the number is growing. Who wants to maintain a society and a social structure? such as we have right now. Bring it down. Bring it down. There's something good may, may live in this place. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, I know. You guys can just do the hallelujahs. Because half of you don't even believe what I just said. Because you just want your job. And you just want your luxury. And you just want your love of ease. And you just want your land of sweet peace and prosperity. No matter how many kids are getting murdered through abortion, and through un, unrighteous rule of the Supreme Court and a, and, a, and a Senate and a Congress is completely given over to the Queen of Heaven. True. You know, somebody says, well, you must not be very American. I tell you right now, my, my ancestors landed, landed here in 1626. Plymouth Rock was 1620. They got here 1626. I tell you, we love this nation. We're dedicated to this nation. Our blood is in this nation. One of my ancestors, the first American martyr, my blood is in this nation. She's in the Fox's Book of Martyr for preaching the gospel here in the United States of America. And, and, the, and the, the Puritans didn't like the Quakers at the time because Quakers didn't believe in paying tithes, and that's the way that the Puritans in the Boston, Massachusetts House of Commons raised funds. It wasn't taxes. It was tithe. Quakers don't believe in paying tithe. We're not paying you no tithe. Huh? And then the, she's flowing in the Holy Ghost, and Puritans don't believe in flowing in the Holy Ghost. So your ancestors persecuted my ancestors. Because he comes, he's a descendant of, of the, one of the primary leaders of the Massachusetts colony. We, we love this nation. We know what this nation is about. Our ancestors didn't come here 50 years ago. And give me a break. My ancestors didn't come here 100 years ago. My ancestors are the seeds that birthed this, na that birthed this nation. I'm not, listening. I'm not listening to all these other peripheral voices. I've got this thing in my spirit. Come on, people. I've got what's in them, what was in them in me by the same Holy Ghost, that this would be a place where, the fr where freedom would truly reign, the freedom that only comes by the liberty that is in Christ Jesus, the freedom that only comes by the realms of the glorious liberty of the sons of God, the liberty that is only there where the Spirit of the Lord exists, a, a place where the, the, the kingdom of God could be advanced and if people want to do iniquity, they could go and live in another nation. If they want to oppress God's people in Christianity, they could go live in another nation. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if Matthew Kuncom is listening to me right now, but listen, he's the, he's the uh, grand chief of the Cree nation. The Cree, they're very happy that we came. Hallelujah. Otherwise, it's to be lost in darkness, running around worshiping the grass and the trees. <laughs> you know, come on now, listen to me. Somebody said, ah, you came in disrupting the anthropology. Of the... <laughs> listen, we come delivered them from our eternity without God. Give me a break. Amen. You know. I can't help it for all the evil and the wrong that people have done. There's always evil men trying to take advantage, you know, where, of the blessings of God and trying to take advantage of the, of the pathway and the, uh, that, that the, the children of the Lord have opened up and have changed nothing. Hallelujah. And if I, you think I'm going to be a silent voice to just agree with, you know, uh, the, the, the majority of the Christian community, I'm telling you right now... I, Somebody mistake me for someone else because I'm going to lift up my voice. I'm going to shout. But what I desire is the reign of Christ Jesus. Somebody said, you can't have it in this earth. Oh, yes, I can. You can't have it. I can have it. Somebody said, I'm not looking for some pastor in chief. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for anything within the framework of government to rule over me at all. Of men. Hallelujah. They can take care of the administrative affairs, take care of the natural resources, as it were, and, you know, get all the roads and whatnot, but it's only stay over there. <laughs> they can administrate those various different things that are necessary for somebody to take care of the very day-to-day -day business issues of a nation. Leave the rest to us. 
Hallelujah. Just leave the rest to us. Leave the rest to freedom. Hallelujah. Leave the rest to godly living. It's not legislative godly living. Huh? It's not legislative godly living. It's just good Holy Ghost rules. Amen. Huh? You could say it's legislative men ruling. There's tyranny everywhere. There's legislative men ruling. And we're happy for it. Otherwise, they'd be breaking in your house tonight, stealing everything you got. <laughs> huh? There'd be evil men taking over everywhere. Praise God for laws. Amen? Amen. I just want legislative laws that are Holy Ghost kinds of laws. Amen. Amen. Do you think you can have freedom by allowing anybody to do whatever they want to do and say whatever they want to say? That, well, that's absolute nonsense because that wouldn't be freedom. That's called anarchy. That is called absolute destruction and chaos. There's got to be somewhere of order, and somebody then decides what that order looks like and then opens up the door for greater iniquity. I had some homosexuals ask me back in 19, it was right around 1988, 89. You know, they, I worked with in, in a very you know, large corporation in biotech, and they came to me and they said, listen, what's so bad with a society uh, going ahead and accepting homosexuality. And I gave them an example of the rule of law and the deterrence of the rule of law. And when the rule of law is not there, what happens to a society? One of the examples I gave them was you can leave in, in Libya, this was under the evil tyrant of Gaddafi. In Libya, you could leave for noon prayers and your business, whatever you had, your, you could leave your business unlocked, you could leave your safe open, you could leave your money out on the shelf, and nobody was going to take it while you went to prayer. Why? Because if you took it, your hand was going to be cut off. And that is a powerful deterrent. You have to think, okay, now I might get away with this and have a little extra, but there's a big strong possibility that I'm going to lose a hand over this thing. Do I really want to lose a hand over this? And so it becomes a deterrent a deterrent, rather, for evil men to stop. And I said, if we say yes to homosexuality and that it's good and it's right, what's going to happen is there's a demon force behind sin and it's going to run over our society and it's going to take possession of people who would otherwise have never even considered such a lifestyle. And I could go on and on and on and on describing these things and rationally trying to convince people of what's right and wrong. But the reality of it is, is Father's got to change your heart on the inside. Yeah. Listen, Father wants to bring to, through us a great, a great display of how wonderful it is. Can, yeah. How wonderful it is to be the servants of God. You know, could you imagine the church and the churches lived in such love that there was no evil speaking one of another? If there was just a flood of kindness in the churches where the, everybody was just so full of joy over seeing one another it, that if everybody gave themselves to falling in love with everybody they may, met in the first three seconds, I'm telling you the world would say, I want in, man. I want some of that. Amen. Instead, Amen. what they see is fussing and fighting and frowns and sorrow and sadness and the preacher's got to do calisthenics and jump up and down and scream and holler to get anybody to say, I love you, Jesus, <laughs> above a whisper. <laughs> I'm so thankful for salvation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, of course, when you don't do it and you get in a place like this where everything's got to be real because the Spirit, the Holy Ghost is real. He is real. He's raw and real. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is so truth and nothing but truth and he's not mixing it up with no lie. He hates fake. He hates hypocrisy. He hates show and tell. He hates play games. He's not having nothing to do with it. He is the Spirit of truth and anybody's got any little bit of falsehood and lie, you're on your own. There's a call of God saying, come repent. But you're on your own, and you're a false witness of salvation. It's true. There's so many false witnesses. I was with a bunch of, uh, of Lutheran preachers the other day <coughs> in Norway. Burnout Lutheran preachers, Lutheran preachers just getting started. I mean, Lutheran preachers for generations. Norway, you know, it's just Lutheran. And, uh, you know, retired Lutheran preachers, and I was laying it out, man. I laid it down. I said, you're a bunch of false witnesses, and here's why you're false witnesses of the resurrection of Christ Jesus, a false witness of salvation and new birth. I didn't think anybody was going to come back the next night, hey, baby. I had Anne and Elizabeth with me. They were back the next night and more. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I took up where I left off, man. If the hammer's not big enough for the rock, get a bigger hammer. If that don't work, bring in some dynamite. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
Praise God. By the third night, those Lutheran pastors were crying out to God, repenting, saying, I don't want to live. I've been a false witness. I don't want to live like this anymore. Huh? Come on, I'm telling you right now. In the United States of America, people are so stubborn. They've been so salved with iniquity. Huh? And not listening to nothing. We're going to get a bigger hammer. We're gonna get a bigger. We're gonna get. We're gonna get some dynamite. We'll bring us. We'll bring us some nukes if we need to. <laughs> How are we blowing this thing up? We are gonna blow up the hard place. We're gonna get the false witnesses out of the way. People saying this is what it means to be filled. This is what it means to be born again. This is what it means to be a new creation. This is what it means to be filled with the love of God and the power of God and the truth of God. And you look like a religious whatever. You know, come on. You look like a person that's really just the same as any other good Joe, huh? person who's a member of the, you know, the good Sam Club or whatever. Huh? You still got the same anger. You still got the same rage. You still got the same evil speaking. You still got the same complaining. You still got the same strife. You still got the same envy. You still got the same evil speaking. You still got the same lust looking at iniquity. Being involved in those things that if it was your daughter, your heart would be broken to the absolute core uh, of your spirit, you know. If it was your wife or your husband involved in those things, it would destroy your life. But yet you are willing to be satisfied and enjoy something that is a result of the destruction of another soul and the activity and the working of a demon power in another human existence. That is weird, man. That is twisted. You listen to me. It's time for people to just, you know, open up their eyes and breathe the fresh air of reality and truth. Say, look, God has brought us into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. He's come here to teach us his ways of purity and holiness. Purity is a wonderful thing. It allows you to see clearly. It allows you not to be deceived. It keeps your heart in a place where it's not compromised with all these other things that would overrun you and destroy you. Oh, God is a good protector. I want to be protected by him. He's a good keeper. I want to be kept by him. And he's, his mercy endures forever. So as long as a person is willing, he's there working with us. He'll teach you how to hate iniquity, man, if you're learn, willing to step up and learn. He'll teach you how to love righteousness if you just got a little hunger in your heart. He'll teach you to walk in wisdom, in wisdom just knowing what God is doing and doing it with them. People want wisdom to go ahead and do whatever it is the devil's doing. <laughs> that is, that's not wisdom. Huh? That's foolishness. That's, that's, that's being completely empty and void of understanding, void of wisdom. But God gives us wisdom and ability to understand what life is really all about, how it really works, what it is he's doing, what it is he, he created when he brought forth the morning, you know. Who, when he spoke and the galaxies came into existence. Whoa, the galaxies made up of all the, you know, the myriads of solar systems. You know, we were with... Some, a, a guy the other day, and he was talking about how he was involved in you know, the Hubble telescope and other things that NASA was involved in. I said, so how far out is it until you've got a telescope that you can put in, the, uh, in space that's going to be able to see the initial event or the outer envelope of what they classically want to call the Big Bang? And he said, oh, about five years out. I said, well, I just want you to know uh, that when you go to look for it, it won't be there. And he's looking at me, it's kind of strange, and, he, and I said, I just, well, just remember, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. And he said, like, you know, he's looking at me like, do you got a, a, a formula, a unique formula that, that no one else has, you know, to figure this out? Absolutely, I've got an equation solved, it's solved, it's solved. God has created all things, and his creation declares his eternal glory. So that means it is an, an infinite expanse. I'm telling you right now, listen to me, hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the Bible, if you just understand even the subtleties of the scripture, it is so far advanced beyond medical science. It wasn't until recent that medical science realized that in the womb that the auditory nerve, the nerve, the ability to hear was, was formed about the time of the third trimester. But if you look in the Bible, 2,000 years ago, the Lord told us that it was already formed by the third trimester. Think about it. Because Elizabeth hears Mary's voice and at her salutation, John heard too. I mean, come on. See, there's subtleties that's got us way ahead of what it takes men 2,000 years. It took men 2,000 years to catch up to that reality. When was it, Doc? When was it that they discovered that, that when the uh, auditory nerve, do you, do you know? 
It wasn't long ago, though, was it? Huh? Yeah, but no, it was, no, it was, it was, it was actually in the third trimester. I know that, I know that there's a, a break point, but it, you know, look that up. Look that up, come remind us, because I, I really believe it was in the, just within the past decade that they've really narrowed down, you know, extend, extended it, you know, back a little bit, you know. Maybe everybody had already, you know, come to the conclusion by the 27th week or 26th week. Uh, but, you know, you keep backing down and say, oh, no, it was there by the 20, 22nd week. And, you know, the, uh, you know, a long time ago, the Lord told us that the, the Lord set upon the circle of the earth. Isaiah prophesied. You know, Isaiah helped everybody understand uh, 2,600 years ago that the earth wasn't flat. But nobody was listening to the, just even the subtleties. And Father has given to us even more explosive wisdom and insight. And especially as it relates to the realms of eternal, the eternal, the eternity. The, the, ex, the, the expanse of what you and I are able to understand that we are allowed to do in cooperation with God. Father has bestowed upon us his power, his authority, his ability to walk in his signs and wonders and the demonstration of his own unique ability. Listen, and with that comes things like seeing sickness and disease healed. What we want to see sickness and disease healed, we've got to learn to move with the Spirit. You know what? Um, you may really like sailing, but if you've never sailed and you go out to uh, the marina down here and you get on yourself, uh, get yourself on a 56-foot, you know, craft out there, you know, a slew or something, a good schooner, whatever, uh, you are going to make a mess of it. You will not get out of the, more than likely, you will not get out of just the marina. You probably will not, hopefully, for your own sake, get out <laughs> of the bay but if you get actually out on the ocean and you've never learned the skill of it you're dead for sure or at least you're going to have to be rescued by the coast guard <laughs> and there is you know wisdom teaches you wait a minute i'm going to learn how to do this i'm going to get myself a little you know you know 12 footer or whatever i'm going to learn how to do this i'm going to go to school i'm going to be taught the skills of of, of sailing and and how to Utilize the wind properly and how to navigate properly and how to tack properly and how to do all the various different things that are essential to be able to have that kind of insight and that kind of understanding to move a sailboat this 56 foot long. Listen, even more so in terms of moving in the Holy Ghost to learn how to function in the signs and wonders and miracles that move us into these works and greater works. I'm not satisfied. People just want to huddle around some little blip that comes above what everybody else is doing and call that the outpouring of God's Spirit. No. No, it's just a blip above the normal of what God... You know, it's just a blip above the normal. What God wants is He wants these signs... He wants these works and greater works. He wants these signs to follow the believers. The believers. He wants every one of us in every dimension of our life, in every place that we live, in every place that you know, we, we work, in every place that we play, to see the glory of heaven being manifest, to see the love of God being revealed, the love of God that is able to deliver people from torment, that is able to deliver people from sickness and disease and bondage, and, and, and is able to make the legs grow and able to make the arms grow. We just with some in, in Cuba, and the Lord blessed us to be able to do the largest gathering of pastors and leaders in the nation of Cuba since 1959, and people from Cuba are, are, are being able to view this too. Uh, uh, YouTube as well, and uh, my son Cade was with me. You know, I have people who are witness to these things. I'm not just, you know, ex evangelistically speaking, and, and, and of course, Sandy's back there. She was an interpreter. She was privy to every word that was said. So I'm not just evangelistically speaking. People think, well, you know, we don't know when somebody's telling us the truth or when somebody's just giving to us a, a play on words or whether they're just speaking out of faith, you know, saying things that are not as though they were. You with me? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but there's real things going down here. And, you know, um, but, you know, and I feel I have to do that. I feel, I feel it's necessary just to pause and say, wait a minute, people, we're not just, I'm not playing any games here. We're not trying to make ourselves something. We're just talking about, we just want to display the glory and the power of God of where Father is going to be willing to use anybody for, if, anyone, if you're just willing to, to be used. You know, Father wants to use us to take nations, to shake nations. I can't remember what I was actually saying as soon as I did the parenthetical statement. But yeah, but there was a guy there and he, was, he had no arms. And he, he got his arms blow off because he accidentally stepped on um, a, a mine in Guantanamo. 
And of course, let's just leave all the stuff over there and bother those folks, you know. Let's go ahead and impress other nations so we don't have it here. But I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into that. Let's go ahead and test our nuclear bombs in Somalia uh, or uh, on the Solomon Islands and let them have the nuclear fallout so we don't have to deal with it. But I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into the devastation and tragedies that a, uh, that a perverse government would p impose upon us. I'm not going to go into that. But at any rate, <laughs> he, he blew both of his hands off holding onto that landmine. And I saw, when I saw him, I, I'm telling you right now, at that moment, I saw in the realms of faith, I saw his arms growing out. I saw his arms growing out. This is what God wants us to do. I, and the Lord, the Lord did not, I mean, I know faith. I understand faith. And look around, I understand faith. I didn't have the, the, the direction of the Lord right then to tell him, your arms are going to grow out. And maybe I did. Did I tell him his arms are going to grow out? Or I told somebody their arms are I didn't have the direction of the Lord to say now in the name of Jesus, but we're getting ready to go back there and we're getting ready to do a crusade in a stadium that seats 75,000 people. And what's going to happen is Fidel and Raul Castro is going to give it to us for free. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pray for Fidel Castro and he's going to come into the kingdom of God. And he's going to be on the platform. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's not a monster with horns. He's a human being who hates oppression. And he just went from one oppression to another kind of oppression because there's no answers within the realms of men. So now let me just show him where the real answer is, where real freedom is. Hallelujah. Where real communism is. Not communism as you understand it. Where real communal living is. Hallelujah. Where there's not... A, hey, despite uh, popular opinion, God's not a capitalist. He's not. That's why, there's, that's why you had... I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry for you capitalists. Poor capitalists. That's why, there's a 50, that's why every 50 years there's a jubilee where everything has to be released so there can be no creation of monopolies. So no man can oppress other men through monopolies. Oh, yeah. And you know what? All of a sudden we've got a generation, we call them the, uh, the millennials, and they recognize this and they're looking around going, hey, you know what? This is really, a, this is a mess. And now they're, they're out of control and what they want to listen to is the lies of Bernie Sanders because he has no answers. No. Huh? But his lies are just like the lies of Trump. It's all a bunch of lies. It's lies. The truth is in Christ Jesus alone. The truth is in his word alone. The truth exists in the midst of the church. The truth exists in the midst of the church. The church is supposed to be the fullness of him that filleth all things. But people want to sit around and put their trust in other things. People are willing to allow the church to be less. They want just the preacher to do all the work. You sing my songs. You shout my shout. You do my praise. You move in my faith for me. And we're going to pray that God gives you the strength of 12 oxen. Give me a break. Come on, man. Don't you just hate it when people stand around and watch you work? You know, you want to say, hey, why don't you just go sit in the air conditioning and have some tea with the women? Are you with me, huh? Are you with me? We know this, Amy. We know this. Hallelujah. It's, people around me know if I say to them, hey, you know what? Why don't you just go, why don't you go rest up a little while? They know exactly what I'm saying. That's my polite way of you lazy thing. Get out of my sight. <laughs> Come on now, listen to me. Yes. Listen to me. People just want to, people want to live their own life. Jesus said if you lose your life, you can have my life. People want to hang on to their life and say they got the life of Jesus. Nonsense. I'm calling you out, man. It's nonsense. I've got the word of God describing very clearly what God demands. He paid a high price. Jesus became the sin offering for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He bore our sins on Calvary that we being dead sin might live under righteousness by whose wound we were healed. We thus judge if one died for all, then all are dead, that we should no longer live unto ourselves, but to live unto him who died and rose again for us. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, but it's not us living. It's Christ who lives within us. And the scriptures go on and on and on, declaring the same. And people want to be self-justified instead of being made just by God. You either get self-justification where you sit around and try to justify your state of rebellion against God and disobedience. Or you allow Christ Jesus to justify you and you as a response as a hungry heart. Oh God, I want to be everything you purpose me to be. Father, I'm not holding on to my life anymore. I surrender all to thee. All to thee. My blessed Savior, I surrender all. <laughs> Too many people sing it like this. I surrender half. I surrender 
You know, it's a terrible thing to stand in front of the presence of the Lord with your hands lifted up going, I surrender all. And in your heart, you haven't surrendered 25%. Huh? And people act like God don't notice and God can't hear. Wait! That's the one you're going to cry out to when you're in desperate need. And all it's going to be is false words coming up before the holies of holies and the living God who's full of truth, who demands truth in the inward parts. He demands it. He demands truth in the inward parts. And not hidden parts, he shall make us to know wisdom. Yes. Hallelujah, divine insight. Praise God. Isn't that good? Yes. Well, that's the announcements. I want you to open up your Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My goodness. I'm so excited that I get to live forever in his glory and his presence. I am so blessed that I don't need money to be happy. I'm so blessed that I don't need the praises of men to feel good about myself. I'm so blessed that I have him before me and behind me. He surrounds me, dwells in me. He leads me, guides me, comforts me. Come on, man, what more do you want? If you want something different, you are conflicted, you are compromised, and you will never know what it means to be an overcomer. To be more than a conqueror, you never know it. You can say you have it, but there is no proof in your deeds. There is no disposition of your life, no demeanor of your heart, no characteristics of your soul and spirit that can prove that your life has been changed. We want you to just give it all up to the Lord because I'm telling you, He knows what He's doing. He'll perfect everything that concerns you. He'll provide for you everything that you have need of. He will. I mean, Father will take those people who just want Him, don't want the rest of the stuff, and he will, he will give them the wealth of the wicked. He will, he will make them excessively wealthy that he may establish the covenant, but wealthy in spiritual things first. Yeah. Somebody said to me, he said, well, why isn't the wealth flowing to the, to the believer? I said, because nobody, where is the believer that deserves it that won't be ruined by it? I'm asking God to raise up righteous men like Abraham, righteous men like Jesus, righteous men, holy people of God, that they can begin to be entrusted with the things of the Spirit so that what's going on in Hollywood right now can ultimately be shut down. The wickedness fills the, 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 the airways. The movies shape the consciousness of men, the psyche of men, because the wicked are in control with the money and with the finances and with the skill set. I'm looking for God to raise up valiant people who can turn the thing around, who can, who can be willing and able by the Spirit of the Lord to receive the wealth of the wicked and, and it not pervert them and pollute them and turn their hearts away from God and all they become as a repetition of what was before them. Because you've got to be, you be fenced with iron to do these things. You know, I've watched even as Christian networks uh, you know, we're literally, it started off, maybe they started off right, but I'm telling you what, right now, it wasn't long than the perversions of the heart were made manifest. And all that you have was there is nothing but human pablin and demonic doctrines of hell. You know what I'm saying? Where are the righteous that are going to be raised up, begin to move in the Holy Ghost, to have ability to speak on this level, especially, I'm going to tell you right now, the media is far more powerful than government. The media shapes the popular opinion the government bows to because government's going to bow to the popular whims of the people that usually are created through some kind of propaganda and media manipulation. It's true. It's true. And, and what happens is that there is so much power within movies, there's so much power within the media to begin to, sh to, begin to shape the human psyche that begin to touch the, 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 the hard hearts of men with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in so many ways, subtle ways and very, uh, you know, very forceful and, and, and powerful ways. But somebody in our ranks, some people within the community of the church are going to have to stand up in the presence of God when nobody else can see and, and have the, the barrage of the demonic assaulting them, and they will not bend and they will not bow. They won't give to the lust of the flesh. They won't give to the lust of the eye. They won't give to the pride of life. They won't bow to the realms of the, iniqu of the, of, of the iniquity and, and uh, uh, of the sin that the demon powers try to impose upon men. Where are these valiant men? 
Where are these people of God? Where are these people of the Spirit? Where are they? That's what we have to ask. And the big question is, are you willing to be one of them? Yes. You know, when we look at, at the reality of the gospel, we can see, beginning and looking with me in um, Acts chapter 2, and in verse 38, you know, Peter's there. This is the Pentecostal message. Pentecostal message set in the context of the outpouring of the spirit of holiness. Set in the context of, of a rushing mighty wind and clothing tongues of fire. Set in the context of Jesus Christ having won for us the promise of the Father and having poured out that which you both see and hear that many of God's people don't have any understanding of and they're ashamed of and they don't even understand that it's the entrance gift of the Holy Ghost to teach us how to hook up with the teacher to begin to learn how to flow and move with the wind of the Spirit and to move and function in the realms of the unlimited supernatural power and authority of the sons of God that has been given to us by the Heavenly Father through Christ Jesus. This in this rich, glorious context of Pentecost, Peter stands up and says, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized that your sins may be washed away, Amen. that you may also receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. People don't understand what God has done when he says in, in John chapter, forgive me, uh, Acts chapter 5, I, I, believe it's, I believe it would be like verse 34, it might, right around there, he says, he gives the Holy Ghost to everyone who obeys him. You see that? In Acts chapter 5. Am I, am I right? Verse 34? Verse 32, thank you. Acts chapter 5, verse 32. He gives the Holy Ghost to those who obey him. When we back up now, we go to Acts chapter 2. Back to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. We discover there, in that, in that context, we discover... A whole lot of things happen because when he says those who repent, he's talking about those people who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that which happens when we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can understand from, for example, in Acts chapter 8, how that when Philip went into uh, Samaria and preached Jesus, we discover that as he's preaching Jesus there, I believe it would be about verse 10, kind of highlight this, that they believed on Jesus. They called upon his name and they were baptized in water. And we understand from verse 15 that none of them had received the Holy Ghost yet. We understand that. The Holy Ghost had been poured out on none of them yet. They had only been converted. They had only repented and been converted. You see that. Um, but conversion is a wonderful thing. It gives us a new heart and it gives us a new spirit and we become the temple of the living God. It's beautiful. You know, but Jesus has said, I want to give you extra special power and divine ability. He says it. He says to the, he's, listen, understand me. He says to the disciples, who he gave all authority and power to, over all unclean spirits and all authority and power over all diseases to cure them. He said, you need a special, unique, divine power and ability so you can sit around in church and speak in tongues. <laughs> so you can continue on saying, I got my blessing. Did you get your blessing with very little change in your character and in your nature and in the fruits of your conduct? Nonsense. I'm going to give you a special, unique power and ability so that you may be my witnesses throughout the earth of the great invasion of heaven, of the great transformation of the souls of men to show all that the kingdom of God has come and the glory of the Lord has been outpoured upon all men and through all men that will believe. This is true. This is what God has done. And few respond. People want to gather men unto themselves. And have followings. To, and then they, and what's worse is they use the anointing to gain and gather men into themselves. Either of God or of the demonic realm. People, you and I need to understand how to get broken. How to walk in meekness and lowliness. How to make it all about Jesus and all about his kingdom. How to come together as a body of Christ with a dependency upon one another. Esteeming everybody better than ourselves. And learning how to walk in a, as a company, of a, people, a, a, a company of people that are the people of love. <laughs> a love that lays down its life for the brethren. People talk about, you know, wanting to leave this church and that church. You know, you don't ever get to show the love of Christ Jesus till somebody offends you. 
<laughs> till somebody transgress against you because that's what Jesus did. He came and showed his love to a world that hated him, that had transgressed against him, <laughs> who violated everything about his sacred life. People don't just broken covenant right, left, and center. Lies, 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 lies. As we were just in Lakota country, you know, Tatanka. And everything's got a, a, a Lakota name because that's where they came from, the plains of Idaho and Minnesota. Wow, lies. People tell lies. And, and, and worse is they spend their lives and say it's God's truth. They live their lives and say, this is what it means to be redeemed. And then all the world looks on and says, oh, really? Oh, really? That's what it means? Well, I'm, I, that's why I figured I didn't want it. Come on, people. Why does revival tarry? It tarries because there's not a, the, the people of God are not willing to surrender their lives to him. They got all these other things they want. All I want is Jesus. All I want is to know him, to serve him, to love him. To see him, <laughs> all my riches are found in him. I don't need to do anything. I'm here right now talking to you by, by divine mandate. Because you can't sit in his presence long and not hear him say, who will go for us? <laughs> so I tell you, this thing, that thing. I tell you, if you've been in his presence, you will hear him say, who will go for us? And then if you've got a reason why you can't go, he's going to remedy it. He's going to cure it. He's going to take the, I mean, not going to take the coal off the altar and cause a seraphim to touch you so that your sin will be purged and your iniquity taken from you. He'll give you the blood of Jesus Christ, which purges you purely and perfectly beyond anything that a call from off the altar could do. So that you can have boldness and confidence to start living your life for God. Amen. The Lord didn't redeem us so that we'd have a better career and get promotions faster than everybody else. Listen to me. He redeemed us so he show forth all his praises, all the realms of his divine glory in every dimension of our life. If you're a farmer, your fruit grows bigger. Your tomatoes are bigger. <laughs> Hallelujah. If, if, you're, if you're a herdsman, if you're a if you're, you know, into animal husbandry, you have cattle, you have flocks, they multiply quicker. <laughs> They're the best genetics <laughs> on the planet. Because we see, we have examples of this in the, in the Word, in the Scripture. You don't have to try to have examples of it elsewhere. But it ain't about your fruit. It ain't about, you know, uh, all the things that, that you have in the multiplication of your material things. It is about who you are as as that person that stands being taught by the Holy Ghost how to walk in the character of God, how to walk in His love, how to walk in His joy, how to walk in His peace, how to walk in His confidence. I'm going to tell you right now, people who know God's not sitting around wringing their hands because they're saying they think something's going to go bad. Because they believe in the Father who they can totally detach all them, they're, they're, they're detached from all their own concerns and issues because they know how good He is and how well He's going to provide for them and take care of them. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Harobokos. Ann and I and I went into Minnesota because some people, this young girl, I, this young girl, I, I was in a meeting first night when we were in Idaho, and there's this young girl. I'm just always looking for somebody who's a candidate to do these works and greater works than these. I'm just looking, I'm always looking for someone, because sometimes there's only one or two in a crowd, who's a candidate to live the life of Jesus and walk in his ministry. Here's this young girl. I saw the anointing come upon her. What I learned about her later was, my goodness, this girl, everything she's done, she's achieved. She was like a, a black belt by the time she was eight years old. She's like, you know, some, this thing, that thing, state champion of this and that. Just a person just very de diligent and dedicated and committed to the things that she starts. I saw the anointing come upon her. The power of God just touched her in such a radical way. Then she comes to me with tears in her eyes and she said, a friend of mine's dad's dying with cancer. Would you go pray for him? And I said, yeah, I, I, without hesitation, I said, I'll go pray for him. So we went from the place we were in Idaho to a place in Minnesota to pray for this man who was ultimately ended up being 58 years old, dying of cancer. Cancer started in his eyeball. He lost his eyeball, metastasized, went into his liver, went into his lungs. He was just basically on his last few weeks of life. We walked in there, and we were just received so graciously. We were just received just, just so sincerely to find out he and his wife, his family, the Roman Catholics, they go to a Catholic church. They, they've got these various little prayers around that they're praying, and they're doing everything that they can do with all the sincerity of the heart and all that they know. And I'm telling you right now, 
We walked in there and God the Holy Ghost flooded that place. I mean, there was a greater flow of the anointing in that place. There was less resistance in that place than there is in this place today. I said there was less resistance in that place than there is in this place today. Huh? I'm telling you right now, Pentecostal is going to have to step up because the Roman Catholics running you down. Huh? You have to step up because they are leaving you in the dust. I mean, I'm telling you, Father's not looking at people got all their doctrine straightened out. He's looking at people got a heart who's hungry and desperate for the things of the Spirit, who really want the truth, who really want it the way it's supposed to be. Not looking for self-justification, but looking for truth and reality. Come on, people. Watch the power of God rush in that room. My, I, I, I think it was the night before this young girl, this is just, she's just been around in a little Presbyterian church. That's it, it. It's also been around in a little Presbyterian church, okay? She, she hears the gospel one time, and now she's touched by the power of God. She wants to speak in tongues right now. She wants everything. She wants everything. She wants it right now. She comes walking up to me after, and they were having a fellowship thing after a meeting was over, and I'd, and I'd walked where the, into the place where they were at. And she comes up to me. She goes, she's got a piece of pizza in her hand. She goes, I'm lactose intolerant. Can I eat this? I said, certainly. She's like... <laughs> She said, I have a fractured femur, and it's messed up my uh, muscles and my ligaments. And, and, and uh, she's talking about the different things. And, and she said, and I need this thing healed. I said, it's healed. And then she starts jumping around. This little Presbyterian girl who's all of a sudden encountered God the Holy Ghost, and she's so excited she could do anything. Amen. Meanwhile, people are sitting around for years waiting to get healed. God's the healer. He's just trying to get you to a place to receive it. Hello. Well, I really want to. I really want to. Yeah, I'm sure that you really do want to. But there's some things that you've got to understand about cooperating with the Holy Ghost. Huh? About becoming converted and being like a little child and getting excited about this. this, this. I mean, I'll tell you right now, seeing people get touched by the power of God and receive all that Father has given is easy when it's within the first 24 hours. Amen. Hallelujah. Easy within the 24 hour, first 24 hours. And if the word of God is being ministered right and the word of God is being taught right, it should just do nothing more than get easier and easier. I mean, there's, you've got all these counselors around you, all these people giving you their opinion. Shame on them. Some of them had been better if they had a millstone and they'd have committed suicide before they gave you your, their opinion. But shame on you for listening. It turns your heart from completely trusting God, relying upon God, and believing that everything he said in his word is yours right now. Amen. Huh? Somebody said, suicide? What are you talking about? Jesus said, commit suicide before you do that. What? I had a guy call me up from a, a, a newspaper in, in New York after that, uh, I think it was an Episcopalian priest who was driving drunk, healed someone, killed someone, healed someone, killed someone, said, and they were interviewing me, because they had read my article, because it's gone, it's gone, it's, it's, it's gone <laughs> in quite a number of different places called Alcohol in the Church, where I reveal that any alcohol, a sip of it, is to imbibe demon spirits. And I prove it. Because I, I, you know, if a person's drunk, I can cast the devil out of them and they'll sober up. So I've proven this scientifically. <laughs> you know, our, you know, highway patrol has more discernment than most people sit in churches in San Diego. Because you read the sign, it says, you driving buzz, you driving drunk. Huh? Oh, well, I'm not drunk, I'm just buzz. You give me a break. You're an idiot, <laughs> is what you are. You a self-justified idiot, calling yourself a servant of the Lord. Somebody said, I don't understand why the church is so small. You got a good music ministry? And, you know, you got such a nice building facility. This is exactly why it's so small. We're paying the price because we're going to lay it down. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to tell you I, at a great expense to myself and popularity and all the rest of the job, I'm going to tell you the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. I had a friend of mine who was on a leadership team of a, of a large church, and I was going to take a moment on this. And he was on a leadership team of a large church, and... Um, he was coming back from their leadership meeting realizing that if he got pulled over by the police, he would be arrested for driving under the influence. Suddenly, a sermon that he said in, this, um, in, in, in one of the meetings that I was preaching came and flashed before him. And I began to describe in that sermon 
how that all of this stuff, people are walking around with a cup of wine in their hand and they do not realize that biblically that is a prophetic description that you have the judgments of God upon you. Go read. Biblically, you're walking around prophesying to yourself. You are under the judgments of Almighty God. Huh? That day, and of course he heard me say some other things because I really, you know, I bring it down, you know, when I'm talking about these things because people have taken demonic things and dressed it up and make it look like Jesus. Like Jesus brought 158 bottles of wine to the party so everybody could get slashed, smashed, huh? And otherwise completely drunk out of their mind. Nonsense. Utter ridiculous testimonies, right? Left and center. Demonic lies. Huh? And so he's, you know, after having reflected on that, and here he is now, he, fear comes over him. I'm driving, I'm drunk. And suddenly the scriptures about drunkenness being a manifestation of the demonic and those who are drunk can't be filled with the spirit is flashing through his head and through his mind. He pulls his cart over because he recognizes it. Not only that, I'm also jeopardizing other people's lives right now because I'm drunk. And he's a, he's a good man. He was, he's a good man. It just, he was deceived. In that moment, he had a moment of reality. He pulls his car over and makes a commitment. I'm not driving any further until I sober up. He repents. He says, Lord, forgive me. I will never touch alcohol again. Very wealthy person, leader in a, in a big church. I will never touch alcohol again. I recognize that it's a demon spirit, that it's a life from hell that has subdued my life. He, was, he sobered up. God sobered him up right there. Hallelujah. I haven't talked to him since he sent me an email the very day afterwards. Hallelujah. Testifying this, saying, thank you for bringing it down. I hated you for it, but now I love you. Amen. He didn't say hate, dislike. But it's dislike is hate in the kingdom of God, people. Uh, dislike is where you take human, uh, secular humanism and a human uh, realm of thinking and you dress it up with a nice little, with a nice little suit. And you put a nice little hat on, hey, oh, that's dislike. But it looks better, doesn't it? Got a nice little dress or a nice little suit, got a nice little hat. I'm on you. I'm on you. God said, that's what God the Holy Ghost says. I'm on you, sorting you out. People think they can hide from God in their little belief system. God's bigger than you. His truth will reign forever. Your belief systems better come down. They better, if, if they're not conformed completely to what he says. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. I don't know what all I was saying before I started saying that, but I'm going to get back over here to what I, what I need to be saying, okay? So we look and, and we look and we understand that as a result of having now been born of the Spirit. I mean, is there anybody here who haven't been baptized in water? We want to see you baptized in water. Somebody said, well, uh, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized in water. Well, you aren't the thief on the cross. <laughs> Hello? You're not the thief on the cross. Everybody else was commanded to be baptized in water. <laughs> they were commanded to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And I'm taking all the whole collection of the witness on it. Are you with me? Yeah. Jesus said, be baptized in the name of the, you know, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, them that believe and are baptized, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And then, you know, of course, there's that verse of scripture that I just read to you in Acts 2.38. Uh, you know, being baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. Repenting and being baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. Not that baptism saves. We know that baptism doesn't save you. So if you got hung up on that, there's a bunch of other scriptures that will correct you because sometimes a lot of information is grouped in one sentence. And if you don't get the whole counsel of God, you can easily drift off and come up with a wrong conclusion. Are you listening to me? But having been born again, having been baptized in water, hallelujah. If you've not been baptized, I'll take you and baptize you uh, next Sunday between services. Okay? Considered an announcement. This is the way my announcements come. We will take you out in the middle, and this is the perfect time, because everybody's here on vacation, and we will take you to the most crowded beach in San Diego. You cannot come in your swimming suit. You've got to come in the full dress clothes so everybody realizes something weird's going on. 
What's going on over there? Because people are going out in their clothes so they can then hear me cry out because of your confession in the Lord Jesus Christ, because you're willing to commit yourself to him, to follow him all the days of your life, so that you so give yourself over to him that you take this representation of no longer living, but being baptized into his very life and being raised up together with him. I call to witness heaven and all that hear me now to recognize that you're standing on the side of Almighty God, believing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. What a sermon. I tell you, it's a sermon to preach. I love doing it. I love doing it. I love doing it. We always get a crowd of people that are like, and the seed is sown in their life. Oh, it's so, you don't know. You just don't know. We've got all these ideas and concepts of what we believe has got to be happening, happening if we're really doing it right. Oh, God is able to take his word and bring forth such miraculous fruit if it is just that word just start coming out of our mouth and we begin to be what God has commanded us to be. I want to just talk to you a little bit about now this obedience to the Holy Spirit and learning how to walk with God. Understand that 1 Corinthians, what, and you can help me here if I, if I give it wrong, but I believe it's 1 Corinthians 3.16. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6 and verse uh, uh, 16. And uh, then again, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and I believe it would be verse 15, also says, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Does that give you enough proof text? Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I love to be able to do that. I like to just get people uh, into a place of recognizing what the Word of God says instead of what popular tradition and opinion is. I want you to prove it to me through the Word. If you can't prove it, you know what? <laughs> Listen. And everything must be validated in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And then if your conclusion somehow uh, creates a contradiction, then guess what? God did not contradict himself. You did not find an error in the Bible. Your conclusion is wrong. Because the word of God is a perfect blend and harmony of the same message. God just keeps repeating the same thing over and over again in so many different ways because he realizes our limitation of, uh, and ability to be able to understand much. So he keeps saying the same thing over and over again. In many different ways. But we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know what would do us really a, a great service? Is if we would just go and recognize what, how, how to defile the temple of God. And what grieves the Holy Ghost. And what outrages the Holy Ghost. And we have a, a whole volume of the Bible. In large part, the entirety of the Old Testament describes to us the laws of proper treatment for the temple of the living God. We would understand how not to outrage the Holy Ghost. You're not going to be learned how to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost outraging him. You know, that's why Peter, that's why, forgive me, Paul says, don't be, don't be a moron and be drunk with wine. Don't be a moron and be buzzed with wine. Seeing as we know they're equivalent. But be filled with the Spirit. See, he deals with violation. He tells us, he tells us things like, Peter tells us things like, listen, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Otherwise your prayers will not be heard. They'll be hindered. His eyes are upon the righteous and his ears are open in the, his, their prayer. But his face is against those who sin. That's what God says. We need to learn the laws of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. If we're going to begin to mature and grow in this outworking and the display of the power of God that is supposed to be a light unto the world, a salt to the earth, a witness to all men of who Christ Jesus is. God took us beyond just the glory of becoming a new cre creation, possessors of the divine nature, empowered with this very life to give us something that we can't even imagine that the disciples really needed. Think about it. If the disciples who had been given all authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out. And all authority and power over sicknesses and diseases needed to go get what took place at Pentecost. How much more do you and I need to? It, you know, people, we, we presented the outpouring of the Holy Ghost as the bless me club. No. It is a place where you're empowered now not only to live the life of Jesus, you listen to me. 
It's a place where you're empowered not only to live the life of Jesus, to function in his ministry as well. Wow! To get to go everywhere and represent him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. And so much of it is just simple trust and obedience. Stand up for just a minute there, Faith. Stand up for a minute. How are you doing? Did you have fun at Camp Shake Nations? Praise God. You know, uh, Faith came in the other day and her mom was helping her because she had fallen off a ladder and she was all hurt. and She could barely walk. And I just grabbed her hands and I pulled them forward because they were hurting, but I pulled them forward so that they wouldn't hurt no more. And, I, and then she put pressure on her, on her feet because, so that her, her legs and her ankles wouldn't hurt anymore. And then she started walking with me and then she started jumping around. Then she started running and dancing. Thanks, dear. Why? Why do I tell you that? The reason being is she is willing to not sit there and argue with me and tell me about how she's been through this problem and that problem, how this thing hurt her and that thing hurt her, and how she believes that God did this because somehow he's going to get glorified and her being sick and hurting. She didn't give me all these arguments. It was not distrust in her heart. Does he really know what he's doing? There wasn't this, this defiance, this op, obstinate of, I know better, I've got just as much anointing as you do, and all the rest of the stuff that goes on in the demonic realm in the heads of many of God's people. I'm going to say that again. All these things that go on in the demonic realm in the heads of God's people. It was simple submission and obedience, trust. It's easy. It's just the laws of life. You know, the God, the Holy Ghost tells us to esteem everybody better than myself. I want to interview people and find out, is there anyone you esteem better than yourself? You know, you'll find a couple of wives go, yeah, my husband, I love him so much. But that's about it. You know, it's just like there is such a, a saturation in the realms of the spiritual realm of darkness where the prince of the power of air dominates. He imposes this stuff on God's people's lives and they have no ability to resist. And so they're constantly defiling the temple. They're constantly outraging the Holy Ghost. They're start constantly grieving the Holy Ghost by whom they were sealed. I mean, if you want to understand what grieves the Holy Ghost, what defiles the temple, what kind of things must I now be aware of now that God has done this wonderful work of grace for me and made me His living dwelling place. As the song goes, take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mind. This is, a, this is a preacher's daughter in 1880 in the Holiness Revival. Take my heart. It is thine own. It shall be your royal throne. We begin to look at ourselves as sacred as God has made us. Yes! You know, the, the reality of an identity in Christ Jesus that was displayed. I, I, there are certain people in, in history that I really love. John G. Lake is one of them. He had great doctrine. Very few people ever understood what it was he was saying. He was preaching the word of life, talking about the new nature, the new man, wherein there is no unrighteousness, no iniquity, a complete given over to a realm of identity in Christ Jesus, living out in Christ Jesus' life and his ministry. He's able to go where people are dying of the plague, said, put the plague on me. It will, I won't die. It will die. I'm the temple of God. Why is a persuaded identity, is a persuaded, sold, sold out heart and thinking? People, there's got to be some folks that Father's able to raise up now that he's done such a great work for us. That he's allowed to mentor and teach and guide and instruct. And show them the skills of moving in the spirit. To show them the skills of walking in the divine. People are so fascinated with Perry, Harry uh, Potter and all of the things of witchcraft and whatnot because the media formed this in their psyche. <laughs> People in the Christian community are, are just all excited about various different uh, images of Ashtart, of, of, of sorcerers, demon spirits, the queen of heaven uh, being, uh, you know, the doll and the, and, the, and the dress that their children wear because, you know, Disneyland made it popular. And once again, over and again, we are so given over to a demonic realm and allow demonic things, and we don't even recognize it. We don't even recognize it. So he said, oh, no, now he's talking about the things we have fun with. We can't go to Disney anymore. I'm not saying that. I mean, you know, I think Disneyland is pretty cool. It's got the big turkey legs. <laughs> <laughs> and they got this really cool slushy fruit drink, huh? 
and uh, you know they got the frontier ride. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> and they charge you like 500 bucks to do that. <laughs> but we're stupid. But not like that. <laughs> it's not quite that bad, of course. But people, I'm, look, there, the, where, where is it? Where is a place that our value system shifts? To where I'm having too much fun for Disneyland. I'm having to, I'm, I'm enjoying this too much to get occupied with everything else. That everyone who's just void of love and life and understanding and goodness and the, and the things of heaven need. I don't need that. Right. I'm filled with something that should be so manifested through my life that all the world around me says, I want that. It's beautiful. It's glorious. It's power. It's ability to live rather than to die. The power and the ability to live. Power and ability to be blessed. Power and ability to walk in joy. Power and ability to walk in love. Power and ability to walk in holiness. God says, be holy even as I am holy. That's easy. People say, that's very down. How's God ever expect we ever going to do that? That just must be false doctrine. Yeah, that's God's false doctrine. <laughs> When you're on the side of the devil, it's false doctrine. <laughs> the devil speaks an entirely different doctrine. Be ye unholy. <laughs> huh? We know that everyone who does righteousness is righteous even as he's righteous. On the, the, from the devil's side, that's false doctrine. I know it is. But it's God's doctrine. He empowers us. It's like, it's not some kind of obligation. It's an empowering. He speaks his word and we go, wow, we get to do this. Because holiness is his life. It's a beauty. It's a splendor of all. It's a purity. It's what goes on forever. It's what's never broken. It's an un unending glory of his presence and of his goodness. Come on, people. You've been listening to the devil way too long. It's time to clean all that stuff out. Start listening to God. He's got a better life for you. It's called an abundant life. It's called expressions of his glory flowing out with such force and with such unlimited, un unlimited quantity that the only way he can describe it is it's like rivers. People, if we could just understand this is what Father has for us, but we've got to pay attention. We can't violate the temple. We can't violate his temple. One of the things he says violates his temple above everything else, which he said, if you violate the temple, I'm going to destroy you is immoral, sexual immorality. So that's why sexual immorality is one of the primary things propagated by the, the kingdom of darkness. And now the church has got special uh, programs to help you uh, with this uh, problem through counseling, just like, just like with alcohol. And nobody getting cured of nothing. All you now have the ability to do is cover it up a little bit better and justify it. Are you listening to me? It's a devil that has to be cast out. There's a demon spirit that only the blood of Jesus Christ can destroy out of your life. False doctrines coming and going, lying words preached in the places that men went together to because they've lost the capacity to endure sound doctrine. They will not endure it. They will not sit and listen. In other words, they will not endure sound doctrine. In other words, they will not endure the preaching of the word as God says it. They must have it because they have itching ears. They must have somebody come and explain it that will tell it to them in terms that allows them to continue in their sin. True. That's an itching ear doctrine. And it's going to get worse. It's just the beginning of it. It's going to get worse. All the more why we need people that are going to get it and set us over. As those who are bought with the price, who are not their own, given over to completely glorifying God in their body and in their spirit, which are His. Ha, masetei rimandatas topoya. People that are going to learn. Hey, wait a minute. Look at all this that Father's done for me. This is beautiful. This is wonderful. This is sacred. This is glorious. I want in every way now have this opportunity. I've, I've been given the opportunity to sit at the table of the king. I've been given the opportunity to walk in the spirit, to live out this life of God. I want to understand. I'm going to give myself completely over to it. I want to understand how to do it perfectly. Yes. 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 I pray that Jesus will captivate your heart. I pray that the Holy Ghost will so captivate your ambitions and your motives that he's the whole purpose for your living. As you begin to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, 
Uh, I want to show you something, people. There's a place of living in divine health. There's a place of living in divine prosperity and blessing. All I got to do is learn how to walk with God. We get the privilege of walking with God. Enoch. I'm going to do. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to close. Enoch walked with God in the hardest time imaginable. I'm certain that in the days of Enoch, there was far more iniquity, far more opposing culture than any of us have ever experienced. I don't care what culture you're from, what nation you're from, what situation. It was even worse than the days of Nero. And Nero was a complete insane tyrant. And that was the day, that's who Paul confronted. But in the days of Enoch, in 1,565 years, because of the way things were set up, obviously, in the realms of the spirit, Satan was able to so overrun men with his influence of the realm of the demonic, in the realm of the demonic, that God said, it repents me that I, make, I made man because they had lost all image. Of, they had lost all the glory. God in his mercy destroyed the earth. God in his mercy destroyed the earth because it had iniquity and death and sin had completely taken it, taken it over. In his mercy that he might spare it, that there might be some means by which his plan might go on. That you and I could be here to sit here today he in his mercy destroyed the earth. And you understand the context that I'm saying that in terms of destroying the earth. Flooded it with water so that everything that in the earth that had its life in its nostrils, the breath of life in its nostrils was destroyed. Here we are. We're not at that place yet. We're not at those days yet. We're going there. Fast going there. There's a great harvest. There's a great opportunity. Events are getting ready to happen in the United States of America. The Father is going to look for the res right response. And what if we don't respond right? Because we want to go on in the obstinance of our own rebellion. God needs to raise up people everywhere, especially in this place, that are going to respond with the right heart of surrender and obedience to do it God's way. What has Father willed? Father has willed His only begotten Son into our life. Amen. Jesus said, unless a seed, a, corn, a grain of seed, corn seed die, or wheat seed die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Every allegory that He ever gave was a, a description of us living His life. Because I'm telling you right now, we were just in the cornfields of Iowa. And you didn't plant a, corn, a seed of corn in the ground and go expect to reap a pear off the stock or a tomato. For everything reproduces after its own kind. Jesus' life reproduced his life so that we can say Christ is in me, that I no longer live, it's the life of Christ. That he give us another allegory, say, I am the branch, you are the vine. What an allegory that describes to us complete sanctification. You can't get any more sanctified than being a branch and a vine. And, and then he takes it to a whole other level. Wow, Lord, you chose that as an allegory for the branch cannot live without the vine. And the vine cannot live by, without the branch. It's codependent. It's radical. He cannot be revealed or seen in the earth unless you and I are willing to live his life. It's true. He's made us his witness. And that is going to bring forth a fruit. And the fruit that it's supposed to bring forth is that whatever we ask, he'll do it because the relationship is on that level. He tells us very clearly, tells us very clearly that the fruit is the expression of his own life. It's his own life being lived. And he says, if you have that fruit, Father will purge you so that the fruit will be bigger. It will mature and be more impactful. If you don't bring forth that fruit, you shall be cut off, wither, cut off, and gather to men and burn in the fire. That's what Jesus says. And you can believe all the other doctrines that men say. But what Je the way Jesus brought it down, I'm going to tell you right now, if it wasn't revealed in Christ Jesus, and if it wasn't preached by Christ Jesus, I'm going to tell you right now, it's wrong. Because everything that is of, of, of the prophets, and everything that Paul said, and everything that Peter said, everything that John said, James said, Jude said, was simply taking those things that Jesus said, and, this, and, and maybe just revealing them a little bit more, expressing them in a little unique way, but it's just really the same thing. His life, 
in his words described to us everything is the will of the Father. Are you living to do the will of the Father? Is, if, do you understand that Father is purpose to reproduce Christ Jesus in your life? And that is the most amazing honor and privilege that could ever be, it goes beyond anything we could have ever sought for. It goes beyond anything we could have ever asked. It goes beyond anything we could have ever thought of. That God would reproduce his life in us. That we could be able to walk in his love, his joy. To be filled with all of his fullness. And we don't have to wait for another day because he says he's able to super, he will superly abundantly do above all that you can think or ask according to the power that is already in us, that already works in us. He's already given us the resource that we've been born again. It's a treasure on the inside of us, Ephesians 3, 19. It's a treasure on the inside of us, uh, the second Corinthians chapter 4, I believe it would be verse 7. It's the power of God that the excellency and the glory would be of him and not of us. It's a wellspring springing up unto life so that we're never thirsty for the world again. It's a river flowing out of the Holy Ghost so that all the expression of the power of God God may be manifested in us. And it goes on and on and on. And we sit around with our excuses for why we're going to live our own life and pursue things of our own interest at the expense of all that Father has given us. I'm going to tell you right now, you're the person, if you do that, you're the person that took the talent of the Lord, the gifting of God, and you hid it in the earth. And I know what he's going to say to you. And you know what he's going to say to you because he's already told us. The judgment is not myst mysterious. God's already revealed his judgments. It's true. He is as one who went on a long journey and took those things which he had and he entrusted it to us, his servants. And to each man according to his severally, uh, several ability, his individual ability, he gave to them. To one, he gave to them one dimension. To another, Two to another, five. And expects everyone to produce. And expects to see, proof, to see fruit and profit. And all oh, should we not expect it too? Because if you hunger, you're going to eat from the master's hand. If you're thirsty, he's going to give you to drink right from the rock. Hallelujah. If you desire the things of the kingdom of God to be revealed in your life, they will be manifested. I want you to stand with me. Today there's people in this place that I know you're hurting. I know there's some people that are conflicted. I know there's some people in this place that are tormented. I know there's some people in this place, you're standing right now at the crossroads and saying, ah, uh, he's saying something different than what I know about God. You betcha. I've been privileged to be raised with the mighty men of God, to sit around in the camp of those who God used to declare and deliver his word. I wasn't with the rebellious group of people that came out of the 60s. I carry on the tradition of the church that was delivered unto holy men all the way back from the days of Jesus. I was so privileged to sit under the, the ministry of Finest Jennings Dake. I can go on with a long list. My dad devoted to the, to the word of God. Charles Allen, many, so many other great men of God. Ministers of the word. The people who carried the champion, the message of the word. I'm delivering to you that which I received. Isn't it? I'm not sitting some lone ranger. It's just because we're sitting here, as it were, opposing the popular opinion of the church. Doesn't mean that we don't know what we're talking about. And it doesn't mean that we're not very rooted in the very foundation of the holy apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. Amen. Amen. I know where we come from. We come right out of heaven. I know what we stand on, the foundation of the holy apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. I, the word of God being our boast. And a great company of those who know the word shouting, Amen. Amen. I can't help it that Southern California has been overrun by a spirit of rebellion in the midst of the church. I can't help it that people want to compromise this holy gifting that God has given to us and say somehow that sin has greater power than righteousness, Satan greater power than God, Adam greater power than Jesus. It's not true. It's not true. Righteousness is a greater force than sin. God than Satan. The righteousness of Jesus than the disobedience of Adam. The doctrine is settled forever. Jesus is the model. He's the example. He shows to all men 
everyone's without excuse. Today, God Almighty is here. His only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, here. Holy Ghost, present. To touch you, whether you're standing in here, watching right now by web or by YouTube. There's nothing that can stand between, not time, not space, not distance, nothing can stand between him and his word. This is rich, this is living, this is powerful, as it was when he spoke it in the ageless time in the past. As he spoke it 2,000 years ago, even as he speaks it today, for his son still speaks from heaven. Amen. The Holy Ghost is speaking. Amen. When he speaks, he speaks the word of God, and it's exactly like God's already said it. Jesus said, Behold, I come in the volume of the book. Every page, every verse, every word is about me. Behold, it is written to me to do thy will, O God. Father's calling you. If there's torment in your life today, it's time to get rid of it. If there's sin in your life and compromise in your life today, it's time to get rid of it. If there's false doctrines in your life, time to get, rebellion, stubbornness, do it my own way, time to get rid of it. If there's sickness or disease, time to get rid of it. You know, people are always excited about the sickness and disease part. You should be. It's hectic. It's terrible. Hellacious to live in pain. I hate it. I hate pain. I hate sickness. I hate disease. I'm so, God, I'm so glad God gave me the ability to destroy it and kill it. Amen. Amen. But I'm equally excited that Father gave me the ability to destroy and kill sin. Amen. In fact, I'm even more excited because you can die sick and go to heaven, but you cannot die in sin and go to heaven. I don't care what your doctrine is. It does not matter. You cannot die in sin and go to heaven. This is absolutely the truth of God's word repeated again and again from Revelation 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. Jesus' blood will wash it and cleanse it all away. Hallelujah. A new creation will come forth and spring forth in which none of it exists. Then God in his mercy will be there to cleanse us and wash us if we do sin, not when we sin, but if we happen to sin because we're stupid. He'll give us all the mercy and grace till we get smarter. Hallelujah. But what about a people of God that get so happy about being liberated from the tyranny of sin that they don't want to go back to Egypt? They don't want to go back and live in communion with demon spirits. They receive the fullness of the life of Christ Jesus and the glory of heaven and they want that forevermore. They follow the Lamb wherever the Lamb goes and they never go out. God's calling you to come in. Start living the life that you would like to die and go to. Hallelujah. I know Chuck Smith preached that too because his four, his four square roots taught him to. Because A.B. Simpson doctrine was the foundation of the four square church. Jesus is heaven and Jesus is mine, so I'm living in heaven today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't help it. Burn out drug addicts and dope heads took a hold of the word of God, rebelled against their leadership and said the spirit gives life, but the letter destroys and started preaching a new doctrine in the church. God's word hadn't fell. I don't care if devils stand up. I don't care if Satan himself stands up. Angels, stand up. God's word is not changing. I don't care how popular they are. God's word is not changing. I don't care how much money you got. God's word is not, I don't care how tall you are. God's, I don't care how talented you are. How charismatic you are. And you know I'm talking to you right now because you just so happen to view. Say you need to check in and see what's going on over there. So you're viewing it right now. Oh, don't shut it off. Don't shut it off. You can get saved too. God come deliver you. It's true. One preacher said, if we could just get all of the pastors in America saved, we'd have revival. I believe that's true. It's kind of strange to be here, but it's true. Oh, what about always, once saved, always saved? What about that? Just another devil doctrine. Just another demon doctrine from hell. Oh, I thought once you got saved, you're always saved. There's nothing you do to lose your salvation. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what the devil preaches. He teaches it regularly. 
A lot of people believe that false thing. It's a false hope and it compromises them and they allow all kinds of iniquity in their life. Thinking that God's going to justify them. He's going to tell you just what he told Sodom and Gomorrah. He's going to tell you just what he told anybody else. He's going to tell you just what he told Adam. He's going to tell you just what he told the devil. He's going to tell you just what he's preached in his word over and over again. The wages of sin is death. God will not be mocked. You sow to the flesh and you shall have the flesh reap corruption. That's what he's going to tell you. Come on, people. I wish we didn't have to try to convince people that sin's not so good by threatening them with its consequence. But it's really good to know what's going to happen if you're going to break the law. Because if you're going to go to hell, you might as well know why you're going, right? And if you understand the, how evil something is, then you'll reach to God to be strengthened against it, not to allow it in your life. Do you understand? Yeah. Sins should be no more welcome in your life than cancer. And I'm going to just tell you right now, see, neither should sorrow or sadness, because sorrow and sadness will compromise you to create within you a void that Satan can come and fill. You need to get happy. You need to get happy. Just lift your hands towards heaven. I want you to respond to Jesus. I want you to respond to Calvary right now. I don't want you to respond to your doctrinal ideas. I want you to respond to Calvary right now. I want you to respond to Calvary right now. You respond to Jesus right now. Respond to the one who gave his only begotten son so that you might live. Respond to the cleansing of the blood right now. Tonight, I'm, I'm planning on having communion again because I want to show people how to live in communion. I want to show you how to live in the blood and to live by a heavenly manna. Uh, I'm going to tell you, that's how to live. I want, oh, but you respond right now, that same communion, that same fellowship right in the heart. I had a young man stand in front of me the other day. He was having a hard time responding to Jesus. And I whispered in his ear and I said, by the Spirit of the Lord, I said, when was the first time you took communion? He said, he was a Catholic. He said, when I was in first grade. I said, all that represented was an outward physical thing that God would like to make personal in your heart right now. He wants you to take a hold of that precious blood and let him wash you and cleanse you and bring forth life till it was dead. You've done it since you was in the first grade with just an outward form, but God wants you to take it inside and make it very personal and intimate right now. People, from this day forward, don't you participate with anything that would compromise you. From this day forward, don't you yield your members to unrighteousness. Don't you do it. From this day forward, you give yourself over to say to the Holy Spirit, I am here to be the best student that you've ever had. You say to Christ Jesus, I'm following you all the way. You say to the Father, I'm going to live to do your will. It don't matter what it costs me. You say to him. Right now, I want you to come. If you have sickness, disease in your life, I want you to come. If you've got troubles and problems going on, harassing you and tormenting you, I want you to come. If you have a continual ongoing problem with some kind of sin or addiction, whatever, I want you to come. Because Jesus Christ is the healer of all these things. If there's places in your life where you just need to be strengthened, you just need to understand how to walk into wisdom of God, I want you to come. Ha! Uh, Mom, Jesus is calling you. He's radical. He wants to change your life in a radical way. He wants to touch your life in a radical way. He wants to equip you right now in a radical way to be able to represent Him. You need to be valiant. And the only way you can be valiant is let the Spirit of the Lord fill you with His boldness. Right now, if you're watching me by the web or by YouTube and you've never called upon the name of the Lord because you wanted to be rescued from sin, you wanted to be rescued from the camp of the, of the, of, of, of the demonic, he would call upon the name of Jesus as Savior for all these various different reasons. He's Savior to deliver you as Moses came as a deliverer. Moses came and delivered Israel from Egypt. He didn't live a minute and tell them just that it was all something that was by grace. Jesus came and delivered us from the realms of darkness, from the camp of the enemy, from sin, from death, from destruction. 
by his grace. Hallelujah. Sutar Rabbah. People make Jesus less of a deliverer than Moses. He's a better deliverer. Hallelujah. Kambro Bakata Yeshia. Now, whatever, you're standing up here, you've got various needs that are represented up here. You're watching by the web. You've got various situations, issues, diseases, problems, maybe sin, maybe you've never been born again. I tell you right now, the name of Jesus is an all-powerful name that will break every power of darkness, every sin, every defiance, every disease. You put your trust in him. There are some people, you listen to me, there's some people that they're going to uh, Alcoholics Anonymous uh, drug program. You not put your trust in God to deliver you. You put your trust in men to deliver you from a program, a psycho, a program designed by psychologists. And I'm going to tell you who the master teacher is in the community of psychology. His name is Lucifer. And he'll just give you one bondage for another bondage, one deception for another deception. Only Christ Jesus can set free. Only his name and the power of his name breaks off that yoke. You trust in him alone. Otherwise, your trust is vain. Paul talked to people who just went and said, look, we ought to at least get circumcised so we can at least have some kind of affinity to the community of Israel. He said, you made grace of none effect. Your faith is void and canceled. Who has bewitched you? And people do a whole lot worse than that today. Say it's God's way. It's his wisdom. Nonsense. It's demonic. It's a deception. You trust in God and God alone. Having begun in the Spirit, we have perfect, made perfect by the Spirit. We grow and mature by the Spirit. The one who began this good work in us will fulfill it and complete it. Look unto Jesus, the author and finish of your faith. Understand, He is the only one that you can put your trust in and not be ashamed. Father's not going to be just one of your little idols on the shelf. Well, I'm going to have trust in Jesus, and I'm going to have trust in the psychologist, and I'm going to have trust in this, and I'm going to have trust in that, and I'm going to trust. He's not going to be a little idol on your shelf. You can have no other gods alongside him. No other gods alongside of him. No other trust alongside of him. God's calling you. Some of you lost your joy. You only had it for a couple seconds. You need to get up here. Father, minister to you everlasting joy. Hallelujah. Woo! Joy unspeakable and full of glory that doesn't diminish. Hallelujah. If you feel good about yourself based upon how you feel you've been doing, then your righteousness and your joy and your life and your hope is in you. But if you feel good based upon what Jesus has done, it will not be, it will be unchanging. Praise God. It, hallelujah. It won't be affected by the storms of, of life or the situations or the failures or the compromises. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to get everybody in the place filled with the Holy Ghost. Saved if you're not. Healed if you're not. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Refreshed. Continually filled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So everybody in here, just lift your hands towards heaven. Let God touch you. Whatever it is that you need, ask Him right now. He's going to do it. He's going to do it.